All right, Dan Geltrude, right now, an accountant who could probably advise a lot of those people to crunch the numbers and see if it's worth their while. Uh, what you know about Dan, he's a great market read, but he's also uh, an accountant by training, so he knows money in, money out. We could use more such brains in Washington, but I digress. Dan, uh, apparently there aren't a lot of you guys these days, or not as many. And a lot of Americans are finding out, hey, I need an accountant, and I can't get one. What's going on? Right. So, Neil, I know you always viewed me as a rare find, but you just didn't realize how rare someone like me is. If well, you I look had an at idea. what's happened... Yeah. <laughs> if you look at what's happened over just the last two years, Neil, 300,000 accountants have left the profession. And at the same time, you don't have as many accounting majors as we've had in the past. So there's this squeeze where you literally have a shortage where we are now literally getting to a crisis. So what does that mean for all those people out there? If you don't have your accountant lined up for this tax season, you better get to hustle right now because you're gonna need somebody to at least file an extension for you wow. so you can get more time to find an accountant. Why have so many left? Where did they go? That's a really interesting question, Neil, from the standpoint of everybody seems to be saying, where did all these people go? In the case of accountants, I believe that during the pandemic, many of them just couldn't adjust to the use of technology, working remotely. And they just said, you know what? I'm too old for this. I'm heading to Florida. Goodbye. Really? That's so weird. Yes. Um, because, you know, it, it's a quite special training, uh, uh, an extra year of college at the least. I mean, that, now this is an exclusive field. Um, they'd be in high demand. I'm sure just consulting would put them in high demand. Are any of them leaping at that? Yeah, I, uh, what we're seeing is, is that accountants are being drawn away to go towards the finance area. Ah. Everybody thinks that Wall Street is paved with gold, right, Neil? So it's those dollars that they're seeing. And they look at it and they say, with all the hours that I have to work, let's say in public accounting, if I have to work those hours, I'd rather go to Wall Street and make even more. But you know something, Neil? That's not always the case. Yeah, not now with what's going on. You know, I'm, I'm curious, Dan. I mean, um, a lot of people who are filling out their taxes or using software programs, Capital or TurboTax or tax cut, um, they're finding that they had huge stock market losses. So the flip side of those market losses is it reduces your taxable income. So I'm hearing that many can look forward to, with or without an accountant, bigger refunds. Is that true? Well, yeah, I mean, if you're realizing those losses, Neil, and the key word here is everything being realized. So right. if you have those losses and at the same time you have realized gains, you are going to be able to offset them. But you know what the real point is here, Neil? When you look at investing strategy and tax strategy, they have to go together because it's not about how much you make. It's about how much you keep. Absolutely. So really, you need to have your accountant as part of your strategy to say, what is the net effect of these moves I'm making from an investment standpoint? Yeah, it makes sense, too. And you look at the tax implications because you're also weighing, you know, obviously the impact of the market and the fall off and higher interest rates. But we forget the tax side of it, especially now if the president were to ever succeed in some of these surtaxes he's looking at. I mean, that could be a very big factor, right? Oh, it's going to be a huge factor. I doubt very much that the president is going to get anything close to what he seems to yeah. be proposing. But if some of that stuff goes through, Neil, it becomes a very uh, difficult process to weigh out because now your investing moves right, are going to be subject to that much more tax. So what happens? In my opinion, less moving in the market, which less moving means mm. we're probably going to see a negative impact. Especially if we start taxing unrealized gains that you haven't <laughs> cast your stock and you're already being Zoomed for that. That's a whole nother uh, drama in a section of the story. Dan, great seeing you again, my friend. Thanks, Neil. All right, Dan Geltrude.